Hi there everyone, this is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy again, and uh, gonna have a quick how-to video for you. And uh, this one is pertaining to waterproofing batteries. Now I get uh, a lot of people asking about it. Let me show you how I do it. So the first thing I want to talk about is the different types of batteries and uh, sealed lead acid batteries, which are, you know, the standard block style batteries that you can get. Uh, those like to be in the water and you do not need to waterproof anything except the positive terminal on those batteries. Lithium polymer batteries, which are becoming more and more popular uh, and common in RC submarines, uh, I do not recommend running those in the water. You would want a full waterproof enclosure uh, mounting it inside your uh, sub driver or dive module, for example. Uh, but these ones are also pretty common. Uh, nickel metal hydride batteries are kind of in between the two in terms of energy density, uh, but pretty common for bigger boats. This particular one is going to be going into a Seawolf class uh, submarine, uh, 196 scale. So it's fairly sizable. It's 12 volt, five amp hours. Now, uh, what you can see wrapped around it here is uh, heat shrink tubing. You can get this uh, online or from uh, electrical supply stores and that kind of thing. Uh, this is pretty heavy duty and uh, it fits perfectly over top of this battery. Um, I've cut it so that it is uh, a little bit longer on either side. And the other thing that I've done is I've cut some plastic little bulkheads out of quarter inch plastic. And these are going to slip in the end just like this, just to create a bulkhead that we can waterproof against. So uh, I did the same thing on the other side and I notched out for the wires. I'm going to insert them inside. We're going to heat it up get everything shrunk uh, around it. All right, here we go. I've got my uh, handy dandy heat gun here. We're just going to uh, heat up that heat shrink tubing and we're gonna get it nice and tight around the battery. All right, so our battery has now been uh, heat shrunk, uh, and you can tell that we got good tension on there because you'll actually see, you know, uh, the the plastic laying flat, almost like it, almost like it looks wet uh, inside there, but uh, certainly it is not, um, and that is laying nice and tight uh, around, and these little bulkheads are locked in place, and uh, to a certain degree, these are a waterproof um, seal right here, but we're just going to make sure of that uh, fact by adding uh, a little bit of additional waterproofing in there. All right, this is where we are at right now. I've uh, trimmed the excess of the heat shrink uh, off. I've left about three eighths of an inch or quarter of an inch uh, around the uh, edge sticking up. Now what we need to do is uh, apply some sealant around the perimeter of the top and the bottom of this battery. And to that job, I will uh, dedicate this uh, black RTV silicone. Uh, you can get this from your local hardware store. Uh, doesn't need to be black, but I like to keep things color coordinated. So um, basically what we're going to do is, uh, is just squeeze. See if we can get this in a little closer for you. We're just gonna squeeze this in. And the trick is to make sure that it uh, coats both the heat shrink and the bulkhead there. And the big tricky part is around the wires. You need to make sure that it gets between the wires and the heat shrink. And you can squeeze it in there so it uh, you get lots in and uh, around both sides of the wire and there you go now what we're going to do is uh, same thing on uh, the other side and let it cure 
Well, there we go. We now have a uh, waterproofed battery. I will say one thing that uh, you want to make sure you do is use clear heat shrink tubing. And in that way, it will be much easier to spot a leak of any kind. And typically it will actually manifest itself as rust of some kind. So uh, you want to make sure that you've got that visibility to see if you've got the potential for a battery failure. Um, again, with it being clear, you can also spot and make sure that that silicone uh, has adhered to that heat shrink tubing uh, in its entirety and there are no bubbles or passages for water to force its way back through. So um, aside from uh, putting a waterproof connector on the end of my battery, I'm gonna say that this uh, is done. This is one way of doing it. There's lots of other ways, but uh, I've had great luck with this. Uh, it's simple, fast, and effective. I uh, hope it helps you in your RC submarine journey. If you have any questions or comments, I would love to hear from you. Email me anytime, bob at rc-sub.com. My name is Bob Martin, the RC Sub Guy. Thanks for joining me, everyone. We'll catch you next time.